Hello, this is Charles Davis. I talked to you about net zero solutions, sustainability, and I want to show you an interview that I did with JB, and he talks about the problems that he's finding and the solutions that they're building in the net zero world in Australia. I want you to take I think ultimately, I think I am an what I call impact entrepreneur. So someone that starts new businesses, but uh, for a specific purpose, and that purpose isn't um, maximizing of profit. Uh, although they need to be profitable, it's actually to, to maximize whatever the purpose is you start the entity for. Um, and then the work I've done is all around social purposes, so helping people with their mental health and or with uh, young individuals not having homes. And the last few years, I've aimed at more and more around climate change and or what they call sustainability and trying to um, work through solutions on how to reduce the climate risk for this planet. So why does this matter? Um, specifically around sustainability, it matters because if we don't change, if we don't come up with new solutions and don't change the way we actually uh, operate as human beings, then this planet will be horrible to live in in another 10 to 15 years. If not, uh, unlivable in the next 30 to 40. So um, what is going to be your goal for what we're doing? In your own words, um, probably twofold: a to inspire others to do really impactful and purposeful work. Yeah. And, and the second one is to try to um, have people work together that traditionally don't work together to solve the climate um, problem. You just brought up something that I want to explore a little bit more to bring Happy to help. <laughs> I, you know, because because it has come up, it is in one of the articles, having people work together that typically don't work together. Yes. Go, go into that a little bit more. Okay. And that's the thing I've been exploring this week. And I think yeah. there's an enormous traction on this. I call the solution radical collaboration, meaning people and entities will have to work together with other entities that could, uh, that will include your competitors, as well as all kinds of other types of people and entities where you would traditionally not even consider or think about contacting, let alone working together. And this is the reason. The When you look at, for instance, a relatively simple problem, which is uh, carbon in your supply chain or uh, and you want to reduce carbon in your supply chain, so anything that happens before you receive goods or services, the only way to truly do that well is, is when everyone that's involved in that value chain all works together with one common goal. The, the common goal technically is to reduce carbon in all of these operations. Mm -hmm. The more strategic goal everyone has, although not explicitly thinks about, is to make sure that nature is actually not getting less healthy. Right? Because the, the, the ultimate aim for the planet is to make sure it stays livable, meaning the health of nature will not further deteriorate, if not gets better. That will never happen for two reasons. A, People will not work together like that unless you start working through on how you make them work together and why that isn't. B, even if they work together, any human being or entity will find it difficult to prioritize long-term outcomes over short-term gain. So we could all agree we're here for nature and we might agree that we work together and we might all work together even if we got everyone together, but we would still feel pressure as executives to take short-term gain, profit or otherwise, over longer-term gain for nature and what we actually agreed we would work together. So the other thing that's missing is nature almost needs to have a voice and a representation across all the people that work together to almost hold all of us to account for the longer term. Okay. So those are the two things 
to work on and and we have some concepts for that say so how do you create nature as a voice and holding people to account and how do you get all of these different entities working together on a, on a constant basis where you share the benefits mm. which is in this case tactically reduction of carbon across the value chain yeah so so, so let, me, let me rephrase this so basically you're looking at the logistics of the supply chain and then having them all work together on uh, reducing carbon emissions or whatever the ecological impact is would that be right? across the supply chain yes right, right but but so how does net zero sustainability fit into that plan because realize you know with all these different corporations and structures profitability is always their goal how do we address that? Um, by creating a mechanism where they can trade off short-term maximization of profit versus longer term, actually less profit. Because I think everyone would probably agree that I can maximize my sh short-term profit now, but that will always go. Um, I will trade off doing that for basically my longer term profit. Meaning if I don't do things now around carbon, it will reduce my profit in five or 10 years time. I know that, but I still feel the pressure to forget about that when I make my decisions now. That would only change when there's a mechanism where the longer term, where nature or someone else will have make you accountable to go, you could do that, but that's the consequence. Why would you do that? So you'll, you'll, you'll need someone to balance your views and your decision-making. So you need some accountability in there because I have yes. seen some things in there about uh, looking at this on as countries and some of the, I saw an article or video about some country being able to pay a fine or or to buy credits. Yes, so they could increase their carbon footprint temporarily. So yes, if we, if we have that stuff. In place, how does this? How are you going to do that? Yes, so 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 you need so the how is partly how do all of these entities work together? How do you do that? And right. the second one is you need a mechanism to hold you to account. The only mechanism to create is that by actually having nature or uh, sustainability, if you will, to have a voice to hold you to account, and then you create a legal mechanism that to 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 facilitate that legal or financial mechanism uh, oh legal financial <laughs> behavioral all of those things but it will start probably with you need all but it needs to include legal so because so that's can... partly the stick for if you don't do it yeah yeah so we, we're looking at governmental policies aren't we um well